One thing that can completely change the look, feel, and mood of any video that you make is the use of keyframes. Whether it's for professional usage, just for fun, or you're trying to become the next big influencer and make that next viral video, using keyframes is going to help with that. So here are seven keyframe effects that you can use in CapCut that will help enhance your next video. For starters, what are keyframes? Keyframes allow you to make a lot of different changes to certain elements within your video just by placing certain points at different moments in your timeline. But the best way to understand keyframes is to actually see them in use. So that's leading into this first keyframe effect, which is a zoom in effect, a zoom out effect, or any kind of zoom effect with keyframes. And you can use this to zoom all the way into something, you can use this to zoom all the way out, you can make fast zooms like this, or you can even slow them down like this as well. And things like this are done to help improve engagement on your videos, and it just adds movement to something that is typically still within your video. And here's how you're gonna be able to do this with NCapCut. So you have your content ready to edit with NCapCut in your editor, and as you can see, if we scroll along, video, there's, there's no camera movement at all. So this first keyframe that we're gonna do is going to be a slow zoom in. So to do this, you, we are going to highlight the clip and we see this diamond that is going to be everything that you press to make sure that a keyframe is added to your content. And that first keyframe is going to be exactly where this movement, the zoom in is going to start. So we need to have an ending point to this zoom. So if we scroll towards the end of this clip, and we add in another keyframe, that is going to be where the zoom stops moving. And to make sure that we have the zoom effect actually work, we are going to come to the image itself and use our fingers to pinch and zoom in, and we can readjust it just a little bit to make it so it fits the screen right. And if we come to the beginning of the clip again and we press play, as you can see, the clip starts to zoom in very slowly from the first key point that we added until we reach that second keyframe that we added. And you really don't have to do anything else to ensure that this keyframe happens just like that. There's nothing else you need to add, there's nothing else you need to take away from the actual video. As long as you add those two points and simply use your fingers to zoom in on the clip and you zoom it in however you want, that is how you're gonna do a slow zoom in on your videos using keyframes. Now, if you wanted to do, let's say, a zoom out effect, you would just do the opposite. You would have your two uh, keyframe points, and instead of zooming in on the second keyframe point, you were going to zoom in on the first keyframe point and move it around, adjust it just how you need it, and then you press play, and you see it's a slow zoom out this way. And those slow zooms are really that simple when it comes to using them in CapCut. Now let's say you wanna do a quick zoom in just like this. The way you're gonna do this within CapCut is simply just moving the keyframes a lot closer together. So as you can see, we already have one keyframe added. Uh, we're not gonna go as far. We are going to just go right here, add a second keyframe, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same zoom in. We're gonna use our fingers, pinch, zoom, and then if we come press play, see how much faster that zoom happens because the keyframes are a lot closer together. And again, with a zoom out, it's gonna be the same exact thing. Make sure that your keyframes are a lot closer together. You do the same process, but with the first keyframe, and then it's gonna happen the same exact way. So that's how you're gonna be able to do those quick zooms, those slow zooms with end cap cut. Now this next effect is really cool. I call it a color shift effect, and that's because it, you can literally change the entire look of your video from color like this to black and white like this in a very smooth transition. It doesn't have to be instant like this. It's just something that you can transition into using keyframes. So before we get into how we actually do that, this is what I mean by a color shift effect. Now, how do we do this? Well. We make sure we add one keyframe to wherever we want this transition to happen. Then we come to the bottom and we scroll all the way to adjust. We come to adjust and we, we're on shadows right now. We only want to move it one or two to the right just to let the keyframe know that we are going to be changing the color of this clip. Now, again, we don't want to make a noticeable difference right away. So that's why it's only one or two. So we press the check mark, come back to our clip and we scroll a little bit further and we're going to add our second keyframe where we want the complete color shift to actually happen. So again, once we have that second frame keyframe added, we come back down to adjust, press adjust and we're going to come to saturation. 
and then we're going to move saturation all the way to the left to negative 50 and then you can see now that the clip is actually fully black and white so we're going to press on the check mark there so if, then if we come to the beginning of the clip and we press play you see that there is a very slow but nice color shift that actually happens to that black and white color all of the saturation in the clip goes away because we set it all the way to negative 50. And that's pretty cool, right? I think it's a cool little effect that you can actually use to really change the entire mood of your videos. And again, if you really want this change to happen quicker, remember all you have to do is move the keyframes closer together and do the same exact steps that you did before. The next effect we're gonna go over is adjusting the volume. So you can really play around with the sounds or music that you're adding to your videos. You can fade it in, bring it in, you can raise the level, lower it in a much smoother way. So for example, let's say you have a video where you're showing a lot of B-roll and then you're talking as well, or I guess a good example are like travel vlogs where the person shows off a lot of B-roll of their surroundings and then the camera pans back to them and they're talking. You don't want those B-roll shots just to be dead air. You don't want it to just be no sound or anything like that those are the, the times where you actually want to raise the level of the music and then when you start talking you want to be able to hear what you're saying so you lower the music but again it's going to be a very smooth transition when you're using keyframes all right so we have this video and we have a sound added to this video what i'm going to do i'm going to make sure that whenever my face is on the screen the volume of the sound is very low but whenever there is just b-roll and i'm not on the camera i'm going to make sure that the volume is a lot higher so because the video starts with my face on camera, I am going to add a keyframe at the very beginning and I'm going to adjust the volume immediately very low. And with CapCut, you're going to always want to make sure that the volume is very low on, in areas where you want to make sure your voice is heard. So we just do it there and then we're not going to come very far to add another keyframe. So we're going to do that and we're going to keep the volume about just as low as we had it so that the volume actually stays low. And then we're gonna come again to where this B-roll happens. And then we're gonna add another keyframe there. But again, we're gonna keep the volume very low. And then we're gonna scroll not very far to make sure that the volume comes up very gradually, but quickly. So we're gonna raise the volume to about 100. And you're gonna be able to see and hear the difference that that makes right away. So it's time to change the tires. Grab a penny, put his head down, and you see the top of his head. You can. And you see that the volume of the sound immediately picks up when I made that small adjustment. And you can do this throughout every single video that you're doing. It's just a good way to make those smooth transitions in the sounds that you really need to make throughout a very good video. Now we're going to move into the next effect, which is moving around stickers, objects, and overlays in our videos. So again, keyframes can work with pretty much any object that we have in our videos. So if we come to the bottom of our screen and we scroll all the way to stickers, we're going to just add a random sticker. Uh, you know, I should add this one. Uh, I kind of like that. Uh, it looks kind of cute. It's funny. It's a cat. Everyone loves cats, right? So we're going to add this sticker to our video. And you see, uh, if we scroll along, the sticker is just there. It's a sticker. It doesn't move. It has no movement at all. So we're gonna use keyframes to add some movement to the sticker. So to animate this sticker and have that movement, we're gonna to come to the beginning of it, we're gonna add a keyframe to it, and we're gonna to come to the second one and add another keyframe here. So what I want to do, I want the sticker to start off screen and then scroll basically to where I have it right now. So to do this, you need to make sure that you have both keyframes added first and then we're going to come to the first keyframe and then just simply move it off screen. Move the sticker off screen so that way the first keyframe understands that that's the starting point. Then the, when it reaches the second keyframe point, it's going to be that ending point that we had it at at the beginning. So if we press play now, you see how the sticker casually just scrolls onto the screen and it stays there for as long as we have it on the video. Again, it's important to remember that you don't want to add one keyframe, move the sticker off screen, and then add the second keyframe because you're not gonna be able to grab that sticker from where you had it in the first keyframe. So add both keyframes first, understand where you want everything to be, and you're gonna be fine when you are adding these keyframes to your videos with whatever elements you're wanting to add them to. 
The next keyframe effect is going to be a tilting effect, and this is going to be something that can just really add a bit more drama to whatever video you're making. So with this, think horror films and how they kind of tilt the camera, they tilt the screen at random moments to build more suspense. And this one is pretty simple. All you have to do is make sure your clip is highlighted, add a keyframe to wherever you want that movement to start, move a little bit more, and add your second keyframe. And to do this, one tip that you might want to keep in mind is you want your clip to start off a little bit zoomed in already because if you don't if you keep it normal and you tilt it you can see that there's going to be a lot of black space in the screen we don't really want that it's going to just make the video look a little bit tacky again that's something nobody wants to see so we come to our second keyframe actually we come to our first keyframe make sure things are zoomed in then we come to our second keyframe and as things are still zoomed in, we just use our fingers to slightly tilt the screen one way or the other. And if we come to the timeline and press play, there you go. You see how the tilting effect happens. It's really that easy. It's that fun. It's fun to play around with. It's not something that you have to spend a lot of time with to really make the tiny tweaks and adjustments. It's always going to be something that adds that little bit extra to your videos to help keep your audience's attention. The next effect is also pretty cool and it's going to be animations with those keyframes. What do I mean? I mean doing things like this with your videos is something that's cool and can really come in handy again with keeping your audience's attention and really leveling up your videos. So all you have to do is grab something like this picture. This is a picture I took when I was in San Diego and I have a, a stock picture of a boat right here. We're going to overlay this picture. So we're gonna to scroll to the bottom, hit overlay, and then we're gonna make sure it is on top of the original picture that I have. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna resize this boat, and right now we can just leave it right there. So I'm gonna to come to the first keyframe and I'm gonna move the boat almost all the way off screen. I wanna still be able to grab it, so I'm gonna move it almost off screen, and then I'm gonna to come to the second keyframe and move it all the way to the other side of the picture just so it makes it look like it's coming all the way across the screen and just moving along with the water. So we come to the beginning again and we press play. You see how that animation of that picture is working. The boat is moving all the way across the screen. That is exactly a, what we want to do with certain things like this. It's just going to be another way to add something dynamic to your videos. And the seventh and final effect that we're going to talk about is keyframe tracking. So let's say we have this random stock footage of people just walking in a park, walking on the sidewalk, and we want the camera to follow one specific person. We are going to be able to do that with our keyframes. So let's say we wanted to follow this lady right here. We are gonna zoom in on her. And the best way we're gonna be able to track her is to just continue to add keyframes and move the frame as she's moving. So we're gonna add a keyframe. We're gonna scroll forward a little bit. We are going to then move the frame a little bit. We're gonna try and keep her as centered as possible. And as you can see, sometimes the keyframe is automatically added. So we're gonna again move, then we're gonna move the frame again. Another keyframe is added. We're gonna move again. We're gonna zoom out slightly and then keep her centered. And we're gonna do this for the entire clip and just keep moving it so she remains centered until she's not in the video anymore. There you go. Now we come to the beginning and we press play. And we can see how it's just following her throughout the entire clip of these people rent walking in a park. And it really is that simple. CapCut does a lot of the work for you. All you have to do is know how to pinch and use your fingers and just add your keyframes at the right time where you want to make sure they're added. So there you have it, seven keyframe effects that you can actually use within CapCut for every video that you make. And I know you can actually start seeing now exactly how effective and good these effects can be for your videos once you start to actually utilize them and implement them in your videos moving forward. But if you have any questions about keyframes and how to use them within CapCut, be sure to leave a comment. If you found this video useful and you're gonna be using these types of effects moving forward, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. But yeah, other than that, that's all I got for you. I'm Steven, and I'll be sure to catch you in the next one. Peace.